Hollywood. I got mad skills. It's the Tom Likas Show. Too cool. And now. And now. Here he is. Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. Here we are after uh, amazing several weeks. And uh, when I say amazing, I'm not just talking about the election. I'm talking about the economy. I'm talking about the wild swings on Wall Street. I'm talking about the number of foreclosures, the number of bankruptcies, the number of people out of work, how it affected the election, all of that. The latest news is that Circuit City has filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, and there's a name that especially uh, the kind of uh, listener we have and the age group that listens to us, we all know Circuit City, and it is still another business that appeals to the broad middle class of America, and you can add that on to Mervyn's Shoe Pavilion, and any number of other names of Bennigans that have filed for bankruptcy uh, over the past several months. Also, businesses that uh, we've heard a lot about and have gotten a lot of hype over the years no longer getting that same cachet like Starbucks. How about General Motors now being down to its lowest stock price in 54 years, 54 years, I mean, uh, we're seeing things happening that are absolutely amazing. I saw something over the weekend that blew me away. And, you know, you see evidence that things are bad all over the place. I'll give you an example of some of the evidence I've seen previously. And I'll tell you what happened to me over the weekend. Um... Various restaurants that I uh, have patronized over the years have disappeared, most notably uh, a branch of Gaucho Grill, which is uh, a chain of Argentinian restaurants around uh, Southern California. Uh, they have not all closed, but there was one right there on Sunset Boulevard in West Hollywood that I had gone to many times. Gone. I have seen more than one fast food joint. There's a Quiznos over on Santa Monica Boulevard. I'm uh, correction, it's on Melrose, around the corner from Pink's. That went out of business. You're just seeing a lot of businesses that appeal to the broad midsection of America. Gone. Just gone. And with them, the jobs and the convenience. Of, of having those businesses there. Yeah, I've, I've seen lots of store closures, business closures, restaurant closures. When you look at all the banks that have gone out of business or merged in Los Angeles, you look around and there are hundreds. I mean hundreds of buildings that used to be banks that are either just standing around empty or being converted to other uses. Uh, one of the uh, most prominent of those, again, on the Sunset Strip. Uh, if you've ever been to the Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf on the Sunset Strip or Baja Fresh, they're next to each other on Sunset Boulevard. Uh, for many years, that building was a bank. It's kind of odd looking if you look at the building and see that all, all you can see that it houses is uh, two fast food operations, essentially. It still looks like a bank to me. There's evidence everywhere. Now, here's the one that really got to me. I was at Costco. Costco. In Burbank. Now, I had just read uh, at some point over the weekend that Costco had its first decline in sales since records have been kept on Costco as a public company in the most recent quarter. Now, I've been a Costco member for years, and I'm a big fan of Costco, and I still shop there regularly, and I wouldn't give it up for the world. I, I think it's fantastic. I, I see no downside in shopping at Costco. Now, in my mind, I could understand if 
Nordstrom or Saks Fifth Avenue or Neiman Markets or these these big high end retailers were having problems and were closing up because people stopped coming. But you would think that a lot of people, especially by the way, the the big secret about Costco for people who are not in the know and who not do not go to Costco regularly, Costco is is not just low end merchandise. Yes, you can get a pallet of toilet paper really cheap there, but uh, they've got coach purses, they've got diamonds, they've got a car buying service. I mean, there's a lot of upper-end merchandise at Costco. And a lot of people like me in the upper-income brackets who shop at Costco. So um, I had heard over the weekend and found it hard to believe that Costco had had a decline in sales for the first time ever because I would think... That everything drips down, drips down, drips down. So what happens is, you know, when people can't afford to go to the high-end stores anymore, now they're not so embarrassed to be shopping at Costco. They're not sniffing at Costco anymore. They're going in. Well, I was at Costco in Burbank yesterday. Met many listers out there. But might I tell you that uh, when I got to the uh, lines, this is on a Sunday afternoon when Costco is usually choked with customers. It was dead. Now, many times when I see uh, Costco with a smaller than usual crowd, I say to myself, is USC playing today? Is UCLA playing today? Are the Lakers playing a day game? <laughs> Are the Dodgers in the playoffs? What's going on here? That might explain it. But uh, we don't have an NFL team here in Los Angeles. It was a Sunday afternoon. It was a beautiful day, but but not warm enough that you'd go to the beach. It was a perfect day to go to Costco. And it was dead. I mean, there were people there. Don't get me wrong. And, uh, you know, there were still people in line. But compared to what I'm used to seeing with lines snaking their way uh, away from the cash registers into the actual aisles of merchandise... I got in line behind one person. I got in and out of Costco in no time flat. It was kind of unnerving. All around us, we see evidence that things are bad. And my question for you is this. How bad is it? What evidence have you seen that things have gotten really bad? Now, it may affect you directly, or it may be something you see as you're driving by it. But I'm just curious... How bad has it gotten? Tom Likas. Like 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show with less commercials. We move it faster. Your chances of getting on the air have gotten better because I take more calls than I've ever taken in my life. For all of you with ADD out there, 1-800-5800-TOM. How bad have things gotten? What evidence have you seen? Pete on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Pete. Yeah, I was in, uh, I live here in Thousand Oaks. I went to the Costco here in Westlake Village. Uh -huh. Same thing happened. There was nobody there. I told my wife, what the hell is going on? I was, you know, I usually go to the one in Simi Valley. I was in Westlake. I said, oh, let's stop here. What the hell? We're here. Because I really don't like it because there's a lot of snobby, you know, people there usually. And it's really, really crowded. But I don't know. What is going on? <laughs> wow. I, 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 you know, it's one thing to uh, to see it myself. Now you're telling me it happened at another Costco as well. Yes, and same thing. Always busy every weekend. And I even thought maybe Sunday might be a little, you know, more dead than Saturday. That's why we went on Sunday, but completely dead. <laughs> wow! I was in and out in half an hour. I couldn't believe it. Now, now, when you saw that, did it make you think, "My God, how far has the economy fallen?" Or were you just you know, happy to have the convenience of nobody there. Well, it's kind of good, uh, you know, the convenience of nobody there. I was in and out in half an hour instead of an hour. But uh, at the same time, you know, I know, you know, we know the economy is declining and hopefully it's going to get better here, you know. But uh, scary, but not too scary yet. It's the first time only seeing that. So I don't know. It's pretty amazing stuff. Now, when I talk about things dripping down, 
in uh, uh, our society. Uh, people uh, having less money to spend, even in the upper brackets. People are spending less. It was a, a cover story in uh, Business Week a couple of weeks ago called The New Frugality, which you may have seen. But, um, for example, in the restaurant business, uh, we talked about Bennigan's going out of business, and a number of other chains in that group have been uh, seeing sluggish sales. That's what they say uh, before things get really bad. They say sales are sluggish. But I'm reading to you right from Forbes magazine. Forbes.com, here it is. McDonald's said its October same store sales rose 8.2% from a year ago, including 5.3% in the U.S. So, for example, what has happened is many people who go to sit-down restaurants, like an Olive Garden or a Red Lobster or a Bennigan's, are now going to McDonald's. Because at McDonald's, you know, let's face it, they've got a value menu. You've got a double cheeseburger for 99 cents. A lot of people are trading down from eating an $8 burger at Ruby Tuesdays and moving it down to McDonald's. And when I say moving it down to McDonald's, they're not moving it down in the quality of the food. They're moving it down to the price. And there's a lot of people out there who like to have lunch for less than five bucks. So uh, there's a sign, for example, that uh, people have traded down in price. And uh, that's why I would expect Costco to be busier, not less busy. And that was the weird thing about walking into Costco and seeing, uh, again, when I say empty, I'm comparing it to what it normally is. Normally, you go into Costco on a Sunday, and just the line of freeloaders waiting to get a free beef tamale is just out of control, much less the people at the register waiting to check out. And yesterday, I got in and out in no time flat. I mean, yes, there were several hundred people there. But it didn't feel like there were several thousands or tens of thousands of people there. Wow. So, seeing McDonald's doing well and Bennigan's filing for Chapter 11, this makes sense. You know, less people are going out to dinner, less people are going out and uh, uh, spending $50, $60, $70 dollars on dinner. And now a lot of people are spending, you know, for the family, $20. Getting some uh, package at a fast food place or maybe they're eating sandwiches or whatever. A lot of people are just eating at home. But the McDonald's story made sense. Costco sales going down, and the number of people at Costco uh, appearing to be going down didn't make any sense to me. All right, how bad is it? How bad are things, and what evidence have you seen? 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Edgar on the Tom Like His Show, hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Edgar. Hey, uh, Tom, I live in Whittier out here in... Uh... You know, I'm a truck driver, owner, operator, and I do some flatbed work. And, uh, a place I went to not the, just the other day, last week actually, uh, early afternoon, usually there's people there, Home Depot. Oh my God, swear to God, we, uh, me and my buddy, he's also a truck driver, and we walked through all the, I was just to, you know, get a good, uh, a view of like, who's there, you know, usual, typical people. I mean, you see a lot of people, uh, contractors and stuff, and I mean, swear to God, there was, Nobody in there. I probably, we probably counted about four people in the whole thing. People were, I mean, nobody really dead. And, uh, that's our life, you know? I mean, that's our, our job. And I mean, I'm looking at this thing. Oh my God. I can't. I, I, next year is going to be really bad. And you see there again. Now here's an example. You know, when people are out buying new homes, obviously the economy is doing well. Uh, but then, uh, when people decide they're gonna live in the house they have and not trade up, many of them go to places like Home Depot or Lowe's, uh, in order to, uh, you know, do it yourself, save on repairs, uh, make additions to the home or put in a new floor or something. So they feel like they've moved up in the world without actually buying a new home. Uh, when people aren't going to Home Depot to do it themselves anymore, that suggests to me that the economy has fallen even further. You yeah, see what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely. I I, I feel it on that. I'm a, I, I'm a hardcore listener, and you know, I, I hope you know nowadays, you know, with uh, with Barack coming on board, you know, just as our new president, elected president, something changes drastically. Because I mean, I'm looking, at, you know, my buddy and I. We're both truck drivers, and we're looking at our mortgage bills, you know, our savings, and we're like, oh, my God. Well, I don't want to bite into my savings account or nothing right. like that. But uh, we're almost, you know, we're, we're already, I'm looking uh, elsewhere now, you know. I'm a local driver, but uh, I'm looking into uh, out-of-state work now just for the fact that, 
you know, I see that tidal wave coming, you know, and I got to do something now before, you know, S hits the fan, you know. So, I think a lot of people see it that way. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, is things uh, are things worse than we thought? How bad have they gotten? What evidence have you seen? Akram on the Todd Like His Show. Hello. Hello, Todd. Hi. Hey, I just want to make a comment. I heard uh, your commentary at the beginning of the show, and maybe something you're not thinking about as far as the Costco sales going down is that these Costco, Sam's Clubs, Price Clubs, what have you, don't they supply a lot of the basic ingredients and supplies to restaurants? Well, yeah, you make an interesting point, and it's not just restaurants. Uh, Costco has a business-level membership, and many small businesses use Costco uh, right. for file folders and staplers and ink for their printers and what have you. So, so it kind of makes sense to me, like, if uh, those businesses are suffering, they're not going to go in and uh, necessarily spend uh, money on more goods. I think that's a very good point. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. This is Jim on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, how you doing? I'm doing okay. Hey, I was watching, uh, you know, the show Squawk on the Street? On CNBC, yeah. Yes, sir. I watch it every morning. I was watching this morning, and they had, I believe it was the CEO of the company in Germany that owns uh, DHL here in the United States. Which, by the way, is Deutsche Telekom, which also owns T-Mobile. Yeah, there you go. He was saying that they are on January 30th of 09 are going to close down the whole DHL here in the United States. And uh, he said 9,000 people will be losing their jobs. 9,500 jobs cut at DHL. And what I have heard about DHL is that they're, they're going to shut down domestic deliveries. In other words, if you want to send a package to somebody in Seattle. Correct. Uh, you won't be able to do it, uh, but you'll still be able to use DHL the way, I think this is how DHL entered the United States in the first place, uh, to send out of the country. But what's interesting about that, um, I don't know, speaking of Costco, how many people have used Costco uh, to get discount uh, freight shipping uh, uh, envelopes? Uh, they're supplied by DHL. You go in and you buy like 10 of these for, for 99 bucks. And then you get 10 DHL deliveries, prepaid. Right, so now so, everybody's going to have to go to either FedEx or uh, UPS. Uh, well, I'll put it this way, everybody's going to have to use up their DHL envelopes before the end of the year. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's see how easy that's going to be. Well, you're not kidding about that. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Here's Scott on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, how's it going? It's going okay. Uh, I was just, uh, just going to, I was interested to hear about this uh topic yet because uh, I work for a local print shop and uh, one of our customers uh, prints uh, like store closing signs and sales signs and you know all that kind of stuff and he's just fucking us with work. I mean he he actually ran the paper company out of paper, the type that he uses and we have to get it from uh, different types of paper. It's just insane the amount of stuff he's doing now. It, it, it's, it's amazing the amount of work that he's given us. Wow. He's just, it's, it's, we've never, I mean, he's always been busy, but it's lately in the last, uh, you know, few months, it's just been through the roof. We're working all the time now. I wonder also, uh, you know, how many people are, uh, are, are getting their resumes printed? I mean, is the printing business going up or down? Well, I, I'm not sure about that exactly. I mean, we seem to be picking up, but I'm sure other companies aren't doing as well, you know, the bigger companies probably aren't, but, you know, advertising and stuff probably is going down. But, uh, you know, our, our, I just feel lucky that our business is picking up in this time, you know. Well, that, well, you know, uh, that, that's good for you. <laughs> but remember, when you leave the print shop, you've got to live in the world among us. And oh, yeah, no, I know. It's, it's not easy. That's why I'm sucking up all the overtime, you know, as, as much as I can. While you can, I understand. It's Constance on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Great. Good. I just wanted to call in and say I have a small business, and what we do is I go to street fairs, uh, farmers markets, and those types of things. I get to set up my booth and sell my products, and we've actually seen an increase of customers. And the only thing I can attribute to that is thinking that, you know, the regular um, day-to-day worker, they can't afford to go to the stores or go to the retail malls, go to Nordstrom's, buy their clothes there anymore. So they're trying to wheel and deal and get better better deals at these street fairs and farmers markets. 
it. And it's actually helping us out because being a small business owner, you know, um, that is how we pay our bills, is having people come to us and buy things from us. So it's actually good in a sense for us, but unfortunately, like you just told the other caller, that we do have to live in this in this world as well, and I still, all my raw materials are going up and things like that. So it, it is tough, but we actually, we need to get more people to go out and help support the smaller businesses because all the corporate companies, they're getting bailouts. The small businesses aren't. Well, also small businesses employ uh, more Americans than the big businesses by a, by a mile. Right. And the big businesses, you saw DHL laying off 9,500 people today. Uh, the big businesses are just uh, putting the axe in the backs of many people. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, if we can just help or tell people to go to, um, you know, try to support more small businesses because we're the ones that need the help because we aren't getting the help from the government. And, you know, you can get better deals with, you know, smaller businesses than going to the larger businesses. Interesting. Constance, thank you for the call. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. How bad have things gotten? Craig on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Craig. Hey, two quick things. Uh, I was in Las Vegas on the uh, Columbus Day weekend, and I'm telling you, that three-day weekend, it looked like a Wednesday afternoon drive down the Strip. Really? Yep, and I went to a lower-end and a higher-end casino on the Strip, and both of them, I'm telling you, I saw dealers sitting there playing with their fingers, doing nothing. Wow. Really, 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 really bad. Oh, my God. I read a story about... Um, it wasn't, uh, I, I, I don't want to name the wrong one, so I won't say, but one of the big chains is going to have a hard time meeting its obligations to pay, to pay their loans off uh, for construction. And one of the big chains is building a hotel that they're actually going to stop construction on now because financially they're doing so badly. Unbelievable. And another thing too, Tom, I'm noticing not too many help wanted signs around the or on the department stores or anything. Usually it's it's jam packed with, Hey, come help us for Christmas and all this stuff. I've only seen maybe one big store have what the wanted sign out. Well, uh, boy, oh boy, that's uh, going to be very bad news on Wall Street, uh, the retail numbers this year, because, uh, you know, I, I see Circuit City as kind of a, a bellwether. Uh, for what's going to happen in the season because uh, so many people buy video games and flat screens and uh, DVD players, Blu-rays, what have you, uh, for Christmas. And if Circuit City is filing Chapter 11 before they even get to the Christmas season, uh, and the Mervins has uh, filed Chapter 11, and they're going out of business. And, uh, you know, you see a lot of this uh, starting to happen now. You can only imagine what's going to happen after we find out how bad the Christmas season is. That's correct. I guess we shall listen to Neil Cavuto. Maybe he can help us out, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. How many businesses does he run, by the way? Just curious. Mike on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Mike? Hey, Tom. Hey, I got an area where I know you're going to be able to appreciate this. Uh, I do a little bit of wine collecting myself, and I've been noticing with all the retailers that I've been going to here in Ventura and the San Fernando Valley, a lot of the high-end guys... They're not moving high-end wines. Seventy-five, hundred, hundred and fifty-dollar wines are sitting while people are coming in looking for twenty to, you know, tell me the next great thirty-dollar bottle of wine or twenty-dollar bottle of wine. So I see a lot of uh, a lot of reluctance to go out and spend big money like they might every few years ago on big wines. Now you have to wonder. There's a lot of pride involved, a lot of ego involved, and let's face it, uh, you know, uh, the business model is you have to at least keep the appearance. They always love to say, uh, well, you know, I understand the middle class is suffering, but at the upper end, uh, there's been no uh, shrinkage at all. Uh, everything's just as good as ever. Uh, but I can tell you, living at the upper end, it's simply not true, and I'm sure that's true with wine. And what they do is they, they're, they're, uh, I guess we're going to see how long they wait and wait and wait and keep the prices high in view of the fact that even uh, people in upper income brackets are, are tightening up. Yeah, well... 
what, what, what the benefit to the consumer, though, is if, if they wait long enough, in a couple of years, those same great wines that are available that they're trying to charge $100 for, we're going to see at $40 in two or three years because they waited too long. Right. Right. Uh, that's exactly right. And I know myself, even though I have a great wine cellar, uh, I am holding off on buying things like Bordeaux's. Uh, hey, let's face it, the uh, the uh, euro has declined in value over the last two months. And uh, if the price hasn't declined accordingly, uh, I'd be a fool to pay that price for a bottle of wine. Uh, well, I would tell you, Tom, I keep up the good work and keep up the good uh, the, the, the good talk. Can you uh, take me out with a screaming orgasm? Yes, you, yes, I certainly can. Oh, oh, God. Oh, yes, yes, yes. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. David on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. Um, I was just saying I wanted to contribute today because uh, I've noticed in our economy, since a lot of people are, um, well, unfortunately, losing their houses, um, my line of work, I'm a locksmith, and we get a lot of houses from a real estate company, uh, just houses have been foreclosed on, and... I mean, we've got evictions coming up. We, we meet with the sheriff and evict people. And, uh, I mean, we're just kind of, at this moment, we're kind of making a killing. I know it's kind of at the expense of other people, but, you know, it's, we've been working this. And uh, we just, I guess, we, we got lucky right now for our end. I got to believe also, this is the part nobody wants to talk about, uh, if you're in the locksmith business, that there's an awful lot of uh, crime, and we're going to be having more crime, or the fear of crime. And I have to imagine a lot of people are going to be uh, beefing up their home security, uh, especially including their locks on their windows and doors. Well, actually, um, we don't really get any of that type of work. Uh, we mostly just do the, like, the entryways and make sure the house is secure. But we do have a big problem where... A lot of, uh, we get a lot of squatters, and we have these warning signs we have to put up on the windows, and quite honestly, I think it's just advertising for all these homeless people that are coming around. They see that sign, they break in, and, you know, now they got them where to live. Wow. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. How bad have things gotten? What evidence have you seen that things have gotten bad? Michael on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. I wanted to tell you, I was over at Universal Theme Park this weekend, and the place was a was a ghost town. Really? And the, a ghost town. The funny thing was, you know, you know, there are no kids. You see Asian businessmen, and you see a lot of gay men who are who I guess still have money to play around with, and uh, they're going out and spending money there. You don't see any families or kids. It was unbelievable. Wow. And I have just another thing that I wanted to mention, too. I, I, I happen to be gay. My partner is gay. We'll go into a restaurant or we'll go into Crate and Barrel and their eyes light up. And it's a little ironic. But not to bring in this Proposition 8 thing, but we're the ones that are still spending and still want to spend. Wow. Yeah, pretty crazy. I've been hearing talk of uh, boycotts as a result of the Proposition 8 uh, passage. Well, tremendous boycotts, but I'll tell you, it's not over. And its uh, I don't think we've seen the end of this one. And I, I think uh, we're going to hold out for this. And uh, in, a, in a couple of months, I think that the, 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 the fact that Prop 8 was... You know, was allowed, was permitted, it's going to be something of the past. I think it's going to go to the bench, and I think we're going to have our way. And you know what? You know, it's, in terms of the economy, I think it's the smart thing to do. We love to spend money, and we love to go into small businesses. We love to travel. We love to go into restaurants. We're the ones that are going in to buy furniture when nobody else is in the store. And, you know, when these people are working on commission, my, I swear to you, my partner and I will go into a store and their eyes bulge out of their heads because they know that we're going to drop five or six grand on the couch you know for we don't have kids we don't really the worries that other people have you know and, and, and another thing that i wanted to mention you know with respect to your listeners and what you've talked about in the past this is the reason why it's so important for these young kids to keep going to school you know get an education go on to get an advanced degree try law school try medical school and, and just stick with it because in times like this when everybody else is suffering you know we're doing okay you are right about that one eight i see it all around west hollywood and elsewhere
one 800 tom that's our telephone number. How bad have things gotten? What evidence have you seen that things are bad? Cody on the Tom Likas Show, hello. How are you doing today? I'm doing okay. Tom, I got my uh, my uh, old man, he lives in Minnesota, you know, wages up there are as high as uh, out here. But he made $12 an hour for 40 years for a company, and last week just got laid off. Wow. 40 years of the company, and they lay him off because people aren't buying fishing boats. Yep, uh, well, I know that can feel, because my dad was laid off after 43 years at a company. And it's uh, humiliating, because I'm sure your dad was in the position of, of my dad. Uh, my dad worked at one company his whole life and had never had to write a resume. Right, right. And then well, suddenly suddenly he had to start looking for a job. I don't think my dad knows how to do anything else other than work on fishing boats. I don't know what he's going to do. Boy, oh boy. It is bad. Arnie, on the Tom Like Show, hello. How's it going, Big Tom? It's going okay, Arnie. Great. I own a coffee house, Tom, and uh, people are buying coffee with change, with pennies, nickels, dimes, and... Uh, even credit cards, paying for a cup of coffee, a dollar sixty with a credit card. So, <laughs> of course, they were doing it with a Starbucks card, and then those people looked like they were flush with cash. Well, the Starbucks they used to get the card, so they didn't tip. You know, it was an extra way of saving money. But now it's ridiculous. I mean, everyday customers coming in with change. We have more change in the drawer than dollar bills now. That is another sign that things have gotten bad. Thank you for that. Jose on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. What's up, Tom? Not much. Hey, um, I work for a construction company, and I deliver a uh, product. And um, I see, driving around, I see a lot of car dealerships going out of business. The one that really surprised me was that uh, Lamborghini dealership right there off of Parkway, Calabasas. Yeah. Yeah, it's completely gone. I heard that it was going out of business, and it is gone, isn't it? Yeah, it's gone. I saw it the other day, and there's nothing there. And I, oh, I deliver over here to Ventura, and, I, and there's like a auto place that I drive by all the time. There's like three, four car dealerships that are just they're, they're gone. And I see, and I see the sales guys like I can see it in their face. You know, come buy a car, they're they're hurting. Wow, wow, wow! It's amazing stuff. I'm trying to find out from you how bad have things gotten? What evidence have you seen that things are? Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-8666. The Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. How bad have things gotten? What evidence do you see? Joseph on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, hey, Tom, how you doing? I'm doing okay. All right, man. I, I just called because I was listening to your radio show. You're talking about how bad things are going on around this economy and all. I'm, I'm in Cerritos Auto Square selling cars. Wait a minute. What were you doing before? Um, I sell cars. Yeah, I sell uh, cars here in well, I, I, you, you sell cars, but is yeah, I'm, I'm waiting for the I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop. Did you? Was that a complete thought, or were you about to tell me something about selling cars? Well, yeah, I was telling you just how everything's changing now. You know, over here in Cerritos Auto Square, you know, I work for a dealership, and things are going to go through a, a merger. And so I sell Chrysler Jeep, and they're going to move down to uh, Cerritos Dodge. And so I'm here working for this company, and I'm just trying to see it. I'm wondering how things are going to be now, you know, probably slow down more my, here myself. Oh, we're all wondering how, how it's going to be. I mean, d does anybody really know? Well, I guess, you know, a lot of the employees here are starting to look for jobs elsewhere now. Because uh, they're no longer needed, their services for the Chrysler section, you know. So they yeah. broke the news. They just broke the news to us like two weeks ago, a week and a half ago. Well, Chrysler is undergoing some hard times, uh, as you know. They were uh, bought by a private equity firm right before Wall Street collapsed. Yeah. And uh, the uh, CEO now of Chrysler is a guy named Bob Nardelli, who used to run the Home Depot. Yeah, I heard. And. Um, you know, uh, they uh, there have been talks of Chrysler merging with General Motors, which would eliminate a lot of jobs and a lot of dealerships. Yeah, you know, actually, I have a customer I sold a car to. He's about 80 years old, retired from General Motors, and he, he receives catalogs from uh, General Motors every so often. And so he just recently uh, called me and asked me if Chrysler and General Motors was together because he's receiving catalogs with Chrysler inside of his catalog. 
So, uh, and that's a guy who retired from General Motors. So, I guess uh, something's going on. Something is going on. I'll tell you something that's going on. Look at this one. Starbucks uh, report on profits is in. Now, you remember previously we had heard that Starbucks profits were down, and now they've got a new report on the fourth quarter. Holy schmagoli. Starbucks profit down 97% because of the cost of closing all these stores that they're closing. Says here in this story from the AP, fewer U.S. customers and venti-sized costs for closing poorly performing stores led to lower sales and profit in the fourth quarter at Starbucks Corporation. The quarter's results came at the end of a transition year for the coffee retailer, in which former chief executive Howard Schultz took back the reins of the company to again fill the CEO and chairman posts. Now listen to this. We're talking all of Starbucks. We're not talking about one Starbucks in Times Square in New York or uh, one of them located uh, at LAX or something like that. No, no. This is the entire chain. Says here, Seattle-based Starbucks said profit in the fourth quarter fell 97%. And the entire Starbucks chain, how much profit for the entire chain? How much profit? No. Less than that. $5.4 million. That's for the entire Starbucks chain. You want evidence that things are bad? There it is right there. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Jeff on the Tom Like his Show. Hello. Tom, how you doing? I'm doing okay. Yeah. I uh, I worked for a, um, a building material supply company. We've got a couple locations throughout Southern California. And I'm um, the sales manager over there. And for the past several years I've worked for them, um, uh, during Christmas time, we always get a nice fat bonus. Um, Christmas bonus ranging anywhere from several hundred bucks for some of the lower level employees up to a few G's for the, uh, you know, the upper management. And uh, this year we are informed instead of getting cash bonuses, we're getting a honey baked ham. For our bonus, <laughs> and uh, luckily, I don't know of any Jews for our, that work for our company, but uh, I hope there are none. Well, you might have Muslims, yeah, or vegetarians, so that, yeah, exactly. So that's how things are going for us right now. So no bonus. You're getting a honey baked ham this year. I'm, I'm getting a honey baked ham. That's right. Well, you save the uh, the five dollar cost of a turkey at Ralph's, I guess. I, I guess it's better than nothing. I guess I got to be grateful I have a job, but just uh, it's pretty ugly. Unbelievable. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Robert on the Tom like his show. Hello. Greetings. First time, long time. Tom. Thank you. So uh, I've got myself into a little credit card debt. You know, with um, the economy, I'm having a hard time paying it back. About thirty five thousand over six credit cards, and then got a mortgage. But I'm trying to get by just paying the interest on these credit cards. And so today I finally reached out to a consumer credit counseling company. I thought uh, maybe we can get this under control, um, help me consolidate my credit card. The lady was, not only was she rude, but she told me you know, straight up, they're based out of Orange County, California, we cannot even see you until December 15th if you're lucky. you got to call in the next Monday, almost in a lottery style. Call in as soon as we open. We'll try to fit you in sometime after December 15th because we're so busy dealing with people who are in a financial mess. That is a sign that things are bad. So I can't even reach out to uh, someone to help help us until after the 15th, if I'm lucky, she said. Uh, this could draw on to next year. They're just bombarded with people like myself who are just in bad shape. Wow. That's hardcore. Matt on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? I'm doing okay. Um... I think the most important thing to realize is it's not, first of all, I think a majority of your listeners are in the L.A. area, and I think that we're better off than the rest of the country. And the only reason why I say that is I think our housing market was the first to get hit. Would you agree, one of the first? Not only uh, were we one of the first, we're almost always one of the first because we have the biggest economy in America, that being California, and Southern yeah. California being one of the largest if it's taken by itself. And every recession I've been through here, and I've been through a couple, um, has uh, begun in California first, and then we came out of it first, too. Yeah, and I was actually telling your screener, I see that in my business. 
more over in the last uh, couple weeks here, um, people are, I sell event tickets, and people are starting to buy event tickets, except for the Kings. Um, people are starting to buy event tickets more and more here in the last couple weeks. I think once the stock market stabilized the wealth, they wealth, their wealth to be a little bit more secure, I think people are starting to spend money again. And I yeah. do agree with you. I think California will be the first to come out of it. And if you look at the comparable home, the home sales numbers in this state year over year, the last report, they were actually up like 8% year over year. Which Large, know, largely on the strength of people buying foreclosed homes, if you recall. At least they're spending money. I know that the comparables are really poor from last year at this time, but at least that's a positive sign. It's good to see a year over year increase. Now, the rest of the country hasn't gone through what we've gone through. But I think that in California, I think we're in the later stages of this. I don't know what your take is on that. I, I think you're right. I, I think things are going to get better in California first. They get bad here first. We come out of it first. Uh, it's generally the way it's worked. So um, I hope you're right. I believe you are right. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Ryan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Ryan. How you doing, Tom? Doing great. I uh, economy so bad I... To have a Starbucks cup in my car at all times, so when I get coffee, I just have to pay for the fifty cent refill. <laughs> Good for you. Can you blow me up. I certainly can. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom Linda on the Tom Likas show. Um, Hi. Okay. Well, I'm hearing all this stuff about how bad things are. Um. I have my own little trucking company, and we were almost, our income was of a million dollars almost last year. It has decreased so much that we're just making about 200000 this year. It has decreased so bad, and I have so many bills and other things I have to pay. I had to go look for a job to another trucking company. For one position, there were 45 people waiting for one position. 45 wow. people. And for them to hire us to know who got the position, it's taking them three weeks. Because they have so many qualified applicants. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. It's the Tom Likas Show.